From this video, we will start learning about how we can work with our Salesforce data and metadata. So there are three ways in which you can access your Salesforce data. The first way is of course Lightning Data Service, which was there in our Aura component framework as well. So the Lightning Data Service allows you to access your Salesforce data or metadata without having a need of server-side controller. The second approach would be using some of the base components which are based on the Lightning Data Service. So these base components will be a great help when you want to create forms on the UI to allow your user to create new records or maybe when your user wants to view or edit some of the existing records in Salesforce. The third approach would be using Apex method which should be annotated with at the rate or enabled annotation. So these methods will help you to write some of the complex logic which cannot be served with Lightning Data Service or the base components. So let's have a look at all these three approach one by one. So Lightning Data Service is written on top of the user interface API which Salesforce uses to access your backend. The advantage of this API is it returns the data and metadata in the same response and it also respects your CRUD access on the object and your field level security and it also respects the, uh, the sharing setting. That means the user will never have access to unauthorized data. He will never be able to see the fields on the UI if he does not have access to those fields. He will never be able to see the records from an object where he does not has read permission and also it respects your sharing setting. That means if he won't be able to view the records where he does not have access to. Along with these different features, Lightning Data Service also offers a lot of different advantages like you don't need a server-side controller. Also the data retrieved using Lightning Data Service is cached on browser level. That means if a user is requesting for the same data again and again, it will be supplied from your browser cache and further server call will be avoided until unless your cache is invalidated. Also, if there are multiple components on the same page requesting for the same record, then the LDS will only fetch the data once and it will share the record with all the different components which are requesting for this same record. So that's a great advantage. If you are using your Apex controller instead of LDS, then you will end up making multiple server-side calls from all those different components which are requesting for the same record. But in case of LDS, if a record is being requested by the multiple components, LDS is going to fetch it only once and going to share the same record with all the different components. It also invalidates your cache if the data or metadata has been changed from your components. And LDS also optimizes your server side calls by bulkifying those calls or deduping those requests. That means it will not send the same request again if the data has already been retrieved using LDS. Now let's talk about some of the base components which are based on LDS. So these components are very helpful when you want to create the forms on the UI, maybe to create new record or if you want to edit or view the existing record. So there are three components which are based on LDS. The first one is Lightning Record View Form, which mainly focus on viewing the existing record. The second one is Lightning Record Edit Form, which is mainly focus on editing the existing record and the third one is lightning record form which is kind of combination of both record view form and the record edit form so if you want to create a record you can do that using record form or the edit form view form will not be supported here if you want to edit a record then also you can use the record form and the edit form the view form cannot be used to edit a record if you want to view a record then you can use your record form or the view form the edit form cannot be used to view a existing record. If you want to generate your own custom layout in your component, then view form and edit form support it where the record form will automatically pick the layout from your record. And the last one is the layout support. That means if you want to supply the complete layout, so the fields that are added on the layout, if you want to fetch all those fields, that is supported in record form, but it is not supported in view form and the edit form. So choose wisely which of these form component you want to use. I generally prefer record form since it is the combination of both view form and edit form. But sometimes if you want to create your own custom layout, you may have to go for view form and edit form as well. 
Now let's talk about wire service. So wire service is a reactive service which is built on LDS and you would need a wire service to read the data from one of your wire adapter. It could be your LDS function call like getting a record using LDS or your normal Apex calls like when you make an Apex call to your Aura enabled methods. So you can use your wire service to get the data from it. We have also used our wire service to get the page reference from lighting slash navigation module. You need your wire service to get the data from different modules. The data that you retrieve using at the rate wire decorator will be cached on your browser side. So this is great when it comes to reading the data from your Salesforce uh, servers, but it's not great when you are performing the DML operation on the data because the data may have been modified on your Salesforce backend. So if you are only doing the read operation, you can use at the rate wire service. But if you are performing some kind of DML operation, please avoid using at the rate wire decorator there. So the properties that you decorate with at the rate wire decorator are private reactive properties. That means if there is any change being done on these properties, the same will reflect on your component. So it creates a one way data binding from your JS to your HTML file. Now let's talk about Apex method. So if you want to access a Apex method in your lightning web component, then first of all, you need to annotate your Apex method with at the rate aura enabled annotation. So these methods can be accessed via wire service, which we have just talked about. But make sure if you are accessing a method via wire service, that is a cacheable method since wire service automatically cache the data on browser side. Or if your method is not cacheable, then you can also make an imperative call to your method by directly calling it from your JS file. So there are few things that you need to remember when it comes to Aura enabled methods. Your class should be either public or global. Your method should be either public and global and your method must be static method. And if you make your Aura enabled method as cacheable equals to true, that means the response that you are going to send from these methods will be cached in browser. So these are all different ways to access your Salesforce data or metadata. From next session, we are going to have a look on the implementation side of Lightning Data Service. So I'll see you next video.